Hello, hello, Joyce O'Dedison here. And today I want to talk a little bit about teaching and coaching. So the difference between the two. So I get asked this question all the time. Joyce, do we teach or do we coach? Uh, there, there's a time to teach and a time to coach. So as a teacher, I teach new concepts. I teach new ideas. I teach new principles. I teach new competencies. I teach people uh, to sharpen their mindset, to expand their thinking. I teach coaches on how to coach. I teach people on how to change their perspectives, their ideas. So there's a time for coaching and then there is a time for teaching. So you can, you can tell yourself that. You can ask this question. You teach things that people need a teacher for and you coach things to the things that people actually just need some prompting to do. So there's the difference. With a coaching, what we do is we shift to perspectives. So I'm not, I'm not teaching perspective, I'm shifting perspectives when I'm coaching. I'm being curious and helping my clients to think outside the box. So they already need to have the capacity to think. Now, take a look at this, thinking is a skill. So not all of us are able to think or think at the same level. Various individuals think at the various levels based on the teaching they've had, the mentoring on how to think. Some people have never had the ability to think critically. And so they need to be taught how to think critically. So if you look at us, all our skills are taught. We, everything we learn we, is taught to us. And coaching comes in to take that teaching to the next level. Coaching is about action. It's about saying, let's take a look at some of the things you've learned that have been dormant, that have been lying on the sidelines over the years, unused, right? And so there's a saying that the brain, you know, can go unused. Most people end up only using 15% of their brain capacity. So what we want to do as, uh, as teachers is that we want to teach the concept that people need help to understand and to learn. And then we shift our hats as coaches to coach now on the knowledge that they've acquired. And now we're coaching them on how to apply these knowledge. So one of the things you have to remember is that coaching is designed for people who are functional. So people who we believe already have the information, already have the ability, already have the knowledge. And our coaching is supposed to go along with the knowledge they have acquired and create a desire for action. So coaching is all about having a, an, a, an action plan, all, all about creating movement. And if you look historically, the word coaching has always been assigned to movement. If you, you think back to the coach and buggy, it was movement. The coach was moving. The coach and buggy was designed for action. And then you think about coach in sports coaching. And again, that coach is thinking about helping people to be their best in sports. So when you come into coach in the coaching realm, when we talk about life coaching, personal coaching, wellness coaching, leadership coaching, which is the realm of coaching that I'm talking about, it's very important for us to start recognizing the difference. So when you ever find yourself in that quagmire, am I teaching, am I coaching? I want you to hear that voice in your head ask, do they have knowledge already that my coming along is going to fuel into action or do they need this new knowledge? If they need new knowledge, then you should be teaching. If they already have knowledge that they just need to infuse into actionable steps and to start making plans or start moving on then or set goals on, then they need coaching. And so all of us at some point in our life will need to be taught, we'll need teaching, and we'll need coaching. 
So one of the things that we do with our wellness competency mindset teaching is that we, we separate the two. The teaching is where we teach people the concept of nine dimensional wellness, the, the concept of wellness mindset, the concept of having a, a broader perspective of wellness and to um, shift what they learn to adapt and learn new information. We teach people wellness competencies, how applying wellness competencies to their life, developing wellness competencies is going to be the structure. I said the structure, be the sustain, the sustenance for the success of what they do. So we teach that. We coach wellness competencies when they already have that knowledge and they've already become familiar with the wellness competencies and now they need actionable steps to implement it and make it actionable and make it visible in their lives. So those who are looking on, so in their interactions, in their daily life, they can now manifest these wellness competencies in their lives. Right? And so you have to decide whether you're going to become a wellness coach or a wellness competency teacher. And with either of those, you have the ability to choose. Now, most people in our network want to follow my path and do both. They want to be a teacher and a coach. There is, there is benefits to both and there is benefit, there are pros and cons to everything. If you are a wellness competency mindset coach, then you know you're going to look for clients who already have a basic knowledge and information and are looking for action or probably searching for something or not quite sure they need action, but you can help them uh, partner with them to design action to execute. Whereas with wellness competency teaching, you're working with anybody because your job is to now teach those who are curious or probably not even thinking about it, but teach those you come across that wellness competency mindset teaching, the nine dimensions of wellness, the wellness mindset concept, all those things you're going to teach. And then when you teach those things, then they're going to learn it and they're going to probably want to be coached on how to make it actionable. And that's where the two of these um, partner into each other because being a teacher, you're now able to teach those who don't have any information. And they may just want the information just to learn. Some people, however, want information and they want to execute on that information. And that's where now you will work with them to coach. I think it's very important in, in spite of the, the differences between the two, I believe that people need both. People need to be taught and people need to be taught rather and people need to be coached. So you as the, as the professional need to decide which you want to do. Do you want to coach or do you want to teach? And if you want to teach, who do you want to teach? Do you want to teach elderly? Do you want to teach in schools, right? We've been invited to teach the wellness competency mindset in schools. We've been invited to teach it with leaders. We do a lot of work in organization with employees, teaching it in organization, teaching it to leaders, teaching it to professionals. And then you have the opportunity to now teach it to a wider range of people. And you can now decide once they learn it, how can you now coach them to execute it in your life? So sometimes you can start your teaching and add a coaching package onto it, right? It's a lot easier to, to add a coaching package onto your teaching than it is to add a teaching package onto your coaching. Because the teaching comes first. It creates the foundation. It creates the underlying knowledge that coaching helps to synthesize and analyze and provide analysis that will really motivate action plans and execution. 
So you have to decide which of these you want to do. Do you want to teach? Do you want to coach? Do you want to do both? And how you're going to package it in your business. This is more, you're, you're coming into this program because you want to coach. And mind you, the wellness competency mindset is the most comprehensive wellness model on the market. Actually, I just received the call from uh, a professor in the US who now wants to use my book as his textbook for his students because he found out about the model five years ago and it is the most comprehensive wellness model he's, he had come across, which we hear all the time. And now he's desiring to actually use it as the model he's gonna to use to teach his students. In, uh, in the university course. So it's very important for us to recognize the tool we have and the, the width and breadth of it and the ability now to use it with others, whether you're teaching or you're coaching, you now have to decide what you want to do. So we have two programs. We have the Wellness Competency Mindset Teaching Program, and then we have the Wellness Competency Mindset Coaching Program. When you come in, you can choose to do both. Of course, we recommend that you don't take them simultaneously because they both require a fair bit of learning. But you take one and then you take the other. So you could choose to take the training, the teaching first, and then the coaching, or take the coaching and then the most people come into the coaching and then they move into the teaching. But I hope this video helps you to understand the difference between teaching and coaching and then identify. So some places we teach um, the wellness competency mindset teaching, which is both the wellness improvement system assessment and the competencies, right? So we call that the wellness competency mindset teaching. That includes uh, informing people of the wellness, the nine, nine dimensional wellness improvement system, uh, the assessment, helping them to assess how well they're doing. And then from there, um, teaching them the competencies that they need to develop in order to sustain wellness or to help others stay well in those nine dimensions. So all that together falls under what we call the wellness competency mindset teaching. And then we have the coaching program that now introduces you to the nine dimensional wellness concept introduces you to the into, into, into the wellness improvement system model, but from a very coaching perspective. So there's a lot of learning that happens when you come into the coaching program. You go into, you take 27 courses. So we are considered, our program is called, is considered an elite specialized wellness program because it includes a model, it includes a toolkit, coaching toolkit, it includes the framework, it also includes your training. So it's an elite program that allows you to be able to work with clients on a wide range using the nine dimensional frame to identify where the client is at, help the client to hone in, to benchmark where they are, and then to identify quickly a plan or a goal of where they want to go so you could plan together on the steps for improvement and development that will get them the success they need. And so that's why it's considered an elite specialized program, unlike just coaching 101, where you would just go take a life coach training or you just go take a coach training. This program is specialized in that regard. It gives you uh, the framework, it gives you the tools, it gives you uh, a, a process that you bring into uh, under the coaching umbrella that you use to help your clients to go from where they are to where they want to go. And you have the opportunity to do either one or both. In our wellness competency mindset teaching program, you get to learn the nine dimensional wellness system. You get to learn to facilitate the wellness assessment. You get to learn to teach the wellness assessment with others, and you get to help them to understand the wellness competencies and how they can be used and the levels of wellness they can attain in their lives. And then now, once they want to now execute and do more work, then they, they are now referred over to a coach to go a little bit deeper, to be able to extrapolate and unearth some of the barriers and roadblocks and shift their mindset so that they can fully integrate and execute it in their lives and in their work. And so this model is being used, I've, I've used it for over a decade, and we, it's, it's 
when I say it's complex, it helps for complex issues, it is because we work with the most complex issues, high conflict, harassment, bullying, racism, and negativity, uh, a lot of complex issues, but the, the model has the capacity uh, in this framework to get people right away to identify where they are and it encourages them to shift their mindset and to be curious and open themselves because it's solely about them. It is all 100% about the client or clients you're working with. So if you're doing an assessment uh, training for a group of 100 or a group of 20, it's all about them. Every person in that room is going to be working on a tool on questions about how well they're doing, what are, where are their challenges, what do they need to, it's not, there's no subject more important for people than about themselves. And that's what this tool allows them to do. And that's why it is so powerful. And then it's the same with the coaching. So it gives them that variety of ways to look at the various challenges they're facing in their lives. But reality speaking, these are dimensions we all have. There's no one who's going to say, I, oh, I don't have a spiritual wellness dimension. Oh, I don't have a physical wellness dimension. We do, except you're in the grave, which we won't be coming here to teach this, then it applies to you. So it's very applicable and it's very foundational when we use it um, in workplace wellness, when we use it to teach, that it comes across and it provides uh, our students with a great opportunity to be able to understand the wellness mindset, understand the wellness competencies, understand how they can apply it into their lives. And uh, our, our coaches and facilitators then are empowered to be able to go out and offer it to uh, confidently to their network because they have the framework, they have the workbook, they have the assessment tool, and it gives them so much more confidence to go out and offer it than if they were going out on their own. So that's one of the, the key benefits. I hope you, you get a full understanding of the difference between the teaching and the training and why you would want to do both or do one, either. Joyce Ederson here, thanks for tuning in. And let me know what questions you have, where you're at, and, um, and uh, what you're thinking about for your future, whether you're a wellness facilitator or a wellness competency mindset coach. Take care. Bye now.